Hello everyone, my name is Peter Rodriguez and today I'll be going over prefetch caching, uh, the concepts around it, um, what it entails, and how we used this concept to build an efficient and consistent caching strategy with Redis CDC. A little bit about myself, I have been an IT professional in the e-commerce space for about nine years. I am currently responsible for the technical delivery of end-to-end e-commerce solutions at the Bountiful Company. Uh, the agenda for today, I'll be giving you a brief background on what the Bountiful Company is, uh, some of the brands that we have under our umbrella, um, the challenges that we have had with scalability, consistency, and efficiencies uh, on a legacy platform, uh, the solution that we decided to go with, which is Redis CDC and how it helped us uh, tackle those challenges, uh, a demo, some key takeaways and next steps. So the Bountiful Company, uh, you may know some of the brands under the, that umbrella, which would be Nature's Bounty, um, Pure Protein, uh, Metrics, Solgar. Uh, one of the other brands under that umbrella is Puritan's Pride. Um, they have been historically for the over the 40 years been a catalog based business, um, but over the last decade, decade and a half, they have had a presence uh, on e-commerce and the web. So what are some of the challenges that we had with that e-commerce environment? Again, uh, we do have that platform running on old legacy system. It runs on a .NET um, framework um, with a Microsoft SQL server uh, backend uh, managing the data for the application. Um, so some of the challenges that we actually faced is, or have been facing, uh, has been more around uh, the caching uh, of the e-commerce environment uh, when it comes to uh, images or product data, consumer data. Um, trying to speed up the, the application ha has been a constant struggle. Um, so we decided to take a, a closer look at how it is that we're actually managing a lot of that data in that SQL environment. Uh, what some of the constraints were and why uh, that old architecture was actually holding us back and uh, uh, kind of just explored possible solutions on, on improving it without having to you know go through a full rebuild of the entire platform. Um, to give you a brief overview of what some one of those challenges were uh, is around how we actually get pricing to load uh, on the website so Again, because we are uh, essentially holding our data in a SQL server, a relational database, our application uh, was reading directly into that SQL server database, fetching the data, and while we were using Redis Enterprise to cache uh, the data that we were reading from SQL server, it was not doing it in an efficient way. And what I mean by that was the application would still uh, do reads on the database, get that data, do whatever it needed to do from a business logic perspective, then create the Redis keys, and later on use those keys uh, to, to serve up cache data uh, to end users. The reason why that didn't work so well for us is because we needed to invalidate those keys constantly anytime we had changes to the database. So. Uh, we had hourly feeds that were feeding price updates um, from our ERP and uh, warehouse management systems um, about once an hour. And once an hour, we would invalidate those keys. The application would again read that from the SQL Server database, run through all that business logic, and recreate those keys. And that was being done for every product page, every category page, uh, any area essentially where we invalidated our product data would have to rebuild all those keys at least once an hour. As you can imagine, that puts a lot of overhead, not just uh, on the application because the application manages a lot of the business logic on the actual final data output, but on SQL Server, constantly having to get select statements being sent over uh, to that application and providing the data back.
here's a little bit uh you know a little bit of a flow of what the legacy state kind of showed like i mentioned before uh sql server would get pricing updates uh, within those sql jobs there were uh, methods being called that would go and uh, invalidate all of the redis keys so as price as the pricing job would run once an hour it would not only update the database tables but call out to redis and say hey uh, please invalidate these keys. Uh, so as the application would make requests to Redis, because they are the application is expecting the keys to be there um, for a pricing update, it would not find it. Um, so in the, in, until on that, we would then take that response and fetch over to the SQL Server database. So we would have to get all that data back. Uh, the database would obviously run all its T-SQL to fetch that data. The application would finally get that data back. It would display it to that customer and then, re then it would create the, uh, the keys in Redis, which then we would be able to call uh, to get the cached data. Again, this would happen once an hour where the application would have to go ahead and recreate all of these keys. Uh, it's, it's not a really uh, pretty nice TTL uh, on, on these uh, cache uh, hashes. Um, so we decided to um, call uh, our friends over at Redis and uh, you know kind of ask them for some help and best practices on what we can do. Um, and that's where kind of this prefetch caching strategy came into uh, the conversation. So, a little bit about that so uh, cache prefetching is really a pattern used to improve performance by fetching the data from uh, uh, its original source the target source uh, like it says here typically a relational database base for us that was Microsoft SQL Server um, and that would essentially read directly from the database on any Delta changes and create or update existing Redis keys. So as we were kind of introduced to how Redis CDC works, um, you know, we were kind of, um, you know, pretty excited about the possible um, outcomes that this would provide. Um, so we decided to move forward, uh, introduce Redis, the CDC connector into our landscape. Um, it was, uh, you know, an application that we had installed on a Linux server. Um, and it had uh, access to both our Microsoft, Microsoft SQL Server and Redis DBs so that they would be able to replicate the data uh, essentially in real time. Um, obviously, this was a, a huge win for us uh, without having to always call the database and having these keys readily available in Redis uh, took a lot of overhead off of not just SQL Server, but also the application. As you can see here, this is the, the new state that we're in. We're no longer having to make all those extra hops from server to server or from application to relational database. Essentially, we have uh, this middleware here, which is the Redis CDC connector in between Microsoft SQL Server and the Redis database, listening to any Delta changes on any tables that we have configured within Redis CDC and replicating that data over to Redis. Uh, again, real time, uh, which takes the load off of our application. Application will only make future pricing requests over to Redis, no longer reading from a SQL Server. So what were the results? Less SQL dependency, real time cache. Uh, the application is no longer depending on SQL Server callouts to update any Redis keys. The load has been dramatically decreased on SQL, allowing resources to be leveraged for other workloads, um, you know, integrations with other systems, uh, reporting, um, other ETL jobs that are probably running on the, the system uh, now have uh, a lot more resources to work with. Uh, of course, cache data is there available in real time, uh, no longer having to force any invalidations or TTLs on those keys. Uh, which hugely improves the, the application performance. 
Okay, so now I'll be going over a quick demo on how quickly Redis CDC actually takes these uh, delta changes, how it integrates our SQL Server environment over to um, the Redis DBs, um, everything from reads, updates, creates, um, are happening, you know, in milliseconds. I'll also be going over um, the Redis CDC little dashboard here that we're viewing here. It kind of gives you some outputs and metrics on uh, all of the updates or changes that are happening between SQL Server and and Redis. Okay, so here we have uh, our SQL Server table. Um, as you can see here, it's just a, a few columns of, of data, uh, item numbers, um, active, yes or no, pricing on the product, uh, additional other attributes, brand names, product name, inventory, uh, etc. So um, what I'm going to do here is actually make some updates uh, to a product. So what I'm going to do here, just for, for some fun, is I'm going to update uh, the brand name from Puritan's Pride to Peter. Uh, and we'll be able to see those in Redis, uh, how quickly they update. Before I show that, let me actually show you all of the keys that were pre-created within Redis. So you see here, this is uh, essentially a replica uh, of our SQL um, tables. Same here, these tables here are now created into Redis hash. Here's the hashed key, uh, primary key, and then all of the attributes. And then if we use Redis search, I can find any products where the brand name is Puritan's Pride. Oops, sorry. So as you see here, pretty quick results, 252 matching items with that brand name. Uh, now I'm gonna go back into SQL Server uh, and make an update to all of these products, brand name, and see how quickly we actually get that update into Redis. So again, pretty quickly here on the uh, SQL Server side, now let's see if we could find those keys in Redis. So here are all of the products that got updated uh, with the brand name of Peter. And we'll see, there's the brand name. Let's just take one of these products, right? And let's uh, do the same thing. Let's just update just one of these. Uh, we'll do it by item number. So as you guys can see here, the brand name for this right now is Peter for this uh, item number. Uh, we'll update it to another brand name. We'll use Cole, that's my son's name. You see there, this product number should be updated. Now the brand name is Cole. So there was already a Kenneth Cole brand there. This is the one we just updated. So you saw that was pretty quick. I literally just updated it within SQL Server immediately available within Redis. 
and if we go over here uh, to Grafana uh, you can see uh, all of the updates I was making here these are these little spikes are actually showing you the the updates that we've been making All right, so that'll be the end of the demo. Let's go back to the slides. Here we go. Key learnings and takeaways. So um, I, I obviously, I, like, like I said before, application performance uh, is greatly correlated with to how quickly it can get the latest data uh, with the least amount of workloads. Um, so now that we don't necessarily have to put all of that effort into a relational database reads, uh, we have these uh, in memory uh, call outs to Redis, our application is able to fetch this data much quicker than it has in the past. Uh, we're able to decouple our application um, from SQL Server as we kind of go over, like I mentioned before, our next steps is uh, to use uh, session stores, uh, we'll, which, which will take an additional workload off of our SQL Server. Um, backend um, once we complete that we will essentially have decoupled our application from the database um, uh, which is, is great it's, it's a huge pain point that we have today uh, and again if done right even legacy systems can take advantage of these new technologies to improve your landscape you don't always have to uh, pay the big bucks to do a complete rewrite uh, or a complete move to to a different platform um, if you have the ability to do so and you, you know you have the budget go for it but um, you know so, some of us uh, are strapped with that um, decision um, and have to find additional solutions and it's nice to know that you're not stuck with one or the other um, you can make uh, vast improvements to your legacy applications uh, with some of these new technologies and Redis CDC was that middle connector that really helped us get there so what are our next steps? So uh, we want to move additional SQL workloads um, into CDC. Um, we do have other tables that we use for external services um, that were not part of our original project. Uh, the plan is to leverage the, the same technology uh, to offload a lot of those requests coming from those services off of our SQL Server database uh, and into Redis. Um, one other additional thing we want to explore is uh, session store caching uh, for our storefront account management. Um, there are some improvements we'd like to make there as well, and so that will be one of our uh, next steps uh, to look into as well. Um, and then additionally explore Azure Cache for Redis. Uh, we do have an overall uh, plan to move or, uh, or migrate a lot of our workloads to the cloud, um, so we're going to be exploring uh, Azure Cache uh, uh, for Redis uh, within the, the Azure uh, ecosystem. So again, uh, here's my email address if you guys have any questions. Um, I hope that I was able to cover uh, the concept of what prefetch caching is, um, how it was able to help us uh, essentially get our, our platform to the next, uh, next level. Um, this is it. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, this was fun. Um, have a great day.